That's okay. Yeah. Okay, you ready? Yep. Let's rock this one. Three, two, one. Hey, I'm Mike. And I'm Max. We're from 28 Fish. Today we're building an underwater color fish camera. Yeah! Woohoo, babies! <laughs> Perfect. Good job, Max. Good job, buddy. Well, winter's definitely here. Gets me thinking about ice fishing. Actually, in this crazy year, I was already out ice fishing on Halloween day and the Sunday before that. Definitely the earliest I've ever been out. I was chasing tiger trout for the Saskatchewan Fish Slam 28 Species Summer 2020 Tournament. Also makes me want to finish my underwater fish camera project. I've run these ActiveView black and white underwater cameras for quite a number of years. This particular one I've had for probably 15 years. And this one we picked up just a couple winters ago as a backup. Smaller camera runs a five amp hour battery and the larger screen runs a 7.2 amp hour. Both of them work okay and you can get more or less one afternoon of fishing out of them, but the batteries do die pretty quick because they draw a lot of power. The bigger camera draws a crazy 17 watts. And the smaller camera draws 10 watts. And although they're not overly bulky, I'm always worried about the old style tube TV getting smashed around in the skidoo. Haven't broke one yet, but it, wires have certainly come off. They also take a lot of maintenance. Uh, you gotta be really careful with the connections to make sure that you don't break or fray any of the wires. Color liquid crystal display models running from $400 to $1,300. We thought we would take our stab at assembling our own camera. The features we needed to achieve were number one, a larger LCD color screen. Secondly, that it drew less power. Next, that it had the ability to add extra cameras. And last, that it was robust, but portable. So we chose a nine inch LCD monitor from Amazon. We got ours for about $80. This particular one is designed with four input channels as it's supposed to be part of a backup system for semis or industrial equipment. So besides the ability of adding four cameras, it also has a split screen option. So effectively you can emulate the AquaView quad system, but with the added advantage of being able to select from multiple uh, formats of split screens so you can watch whichever cameras you need in your fishing application with the push of a button and yes it has a remote which is really really handy in the ice shack. The next thing is that even though this 9 inch monitor is bigger than either of our Aquaviews it drew less power than the smallest one at 7.5 watts. So next we looked for some camera options. One real affordable option with a high quality image is a backup camera that comes just kind of like this but what I found uh, was a tricky thing was trying to get them to be waterproof. So I tried a couple different configurations. I embedded one in the body of a headlamp. I did one just kind of simple with a piece of conduit support so that I could bend and adjust the angle. And we run just a couple plain ones. The other component of course is the cabling. So I was able to find shielded cable. This is actually for security camera uh, systems that have the right kind of connections, RCA in and out, as well as a coax cable, which can give you other options for cameras, and a, a simple 5.5 millimeter, 12 volt, low voltage DC power plug-in. You can get this on Amazon. I think I got uh, four of these for like 20 bucks, and I think these rolls are like 75 feet or something like that. Found in all cases is that the water finds its way into the camera and it kills it. So the other option is to go with a pre-made camera, such as one of these. So if you time it right, you can get this camera for a good price, but I've seen it go from anywhere from $50 all the way up to like $300. What I like about this is that it has a shielded cable. It has the appropriate plugins, RCA, and that low voltage 12 volt 5.5 millimeter input. And it also has the LED system in it. The last component, of course, is the case. Initially, I found this lunch kit that worked really, really well. It had a section on the bottom where I could put all of the wires. And it was just large enough for both the battery and the screen. It made it nice, slow and compact, but um, it's not all that protected. Another option is a Pelican case. I got this one at Princess Auto. It was actually on sale as I'm filming this at half price for 34 bucks, which is a steal. 
comes with all sorts of foam inserts and everything so it can keep everything nice and neat and organized. This is the bottom of East Trout Lake. We're in 46 feet of water. We have about a foot of snow on top of the ice cover and it's overcast day and we're still being able to see down there. I was able to just learn to burb it because of the camera here. This is awesome. You can see my chum pile there. I'm just so impressed with this homemade camera. <laughs> Okay, well, we saw some perch on here, <laughs> and now we got a little hammer handle plate. I took a good swipe at this rattle bait. So Max and I are just out here on uh, Percy Lake, and uh, giving the camera a trial here, so you can see it's just really, really perfect color. I'll give my uh, little crankbait. This is a little pink and white one, and about probably three or four feet away from it. It's pretty hazy down there and it's very, very clear. You can see quite a bit of detail. It's very, very nice. So yeah, about six feet of water or so. I'll just pan over to Max's bait. You can see Max's little um, tungsten fly with a little pink maggot. You can actually see the pink on there. So that's how clear it is. Yeah, it works really well. We're only six feet of water here, but uh, I'm super impressed with the clarity of this homemade camera. So Max, what do you think of daddy's camera he made? I love it. It's the best camera I ever saw. Um, Dad worked really hard, right? <laughs> Thanks, Max. Hope you catch one.